Jalen Brunson has a knee injury scare here early on in the game against the Cleveland Cavaliers. And I think what we notice when he's trying to walk off the court here actually tells us a lot of information about what this injury could be. And we'll talk about it in this video. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and my goal in this channel is to help teach you about the medical side of the sports world. All right, Knicks fans, we're recording this video, still the first half. Uh, we haven't gotten any official word yet on Jalen Brunson, but everybody's asking me my opinion here. So let's take a look at this injury sequence and see if we can kind of piece together what happened. First of all, I know everybody's calling this non-contact, but I do think there was actually contact from the Cavaliers player onto the outside of Brunson's knee. But what I wanna start off with is if we back up the sequence of him walking off the court, pay attention to what happens with his left ankle. You see how he kind of trips and stumbles kind of right, right there over his ankle. What he's doing here, it almost looks to me like somebody who's got a temporary foot drop, right? If any of you watch mixed martial arts, when somebody has those low calf kicks that injure that perineal nerve or stun that perineal nerve that picks your ankle up, the way he's walking right there, he trips over his foot because of an inability to dorsiflex or pick up his ankle. And so that stumble as he's coming off the court to me confirms kind of my number one suspicion about just a contact blow to the outside of the knee because that's where that nerve sits and could certainly have been stunned, almost like hitting your funny bone as you're walking off the court. We can see here just this kind of foot slap gait as he walks off, he's kind of just slapping his foot down. That's almost like a steppage gait, a foot slap gait, very characteristic of when someone's had an injury to that perineal nerve. If we back up the whole sequence now to the actual injury, Watch here, of course, we're paying attention to Brunson's left knee. And as the Cavaliers player comes through, I do think there is some degree of contact because we see Brunson's knee pointing off in this direction. And then right as the right knee of the defender comes through here, we see that knee go inward. I don't think Brunson's natural momentum is going to carry that knee inward. And so it does look to me like there was contact knocking against Brunson's knee. Even the way that the Cavaliers player knee kind of swings through and leg swings through here, I think there was some contact there to the outside of Brunson's knee. If we look at it from a different angle here, a little bit harder to tell, but again, that Cavalier player knee is coming right at the level of where we would suspect that perineal nerve to be sitting. And also from this angle, I don't see the concerning things that we'll usually see when a big major non-contact injury like an ACL, a quad, a patellar tendon rupture occurs. Part of why I don't think an ACL in this case, number one, we don't see any of that shift in the tibia. We don't see that tibia shift forward, pop forward like we'll see with an ACL tear. Number two, his knee is in a lot of flexion. So an ACL tear typically occurs in this position when there's a lot more of a straight knee, kind of this angle. So this degree of flexion would be very unusual for an ACL tear to occur. Also, as he jumps up, we don't see any sort of recoil in the patella, suggesting something like a patellar tendon rupture. Now, you could have a patellar tendon or a quad tendon strain, so like a partial tear, but I don't see anything that jumps out to me as overly concerning right here in this view. Looking here at our biodigital anatomy tool, if we zoom in on the outside portion of a left knee, this nerve, this yellow structure coming down right through here is that perineal nerve. In the case of somebody like a mixed martial artist who's getting these muscles kicked, you can have just bruising in the muscle leading to that ankle weakness. But if you think of this analogous to when you hit your funny bone and you kind of have that limp feeling, that numb tingly in your hand, if you take a knee right to this spot on the outside of the knee, like we saw with Brunson, you can temporarily stun that perineal or fibular nerve leading to temporary nerve dysfunction where you would not be able to activate that nerve and pick up the ankle muscles leading to this type of foot drop. So again, imagine a blow coming to the outside of the knee, striking this nerve. I think that's what we're seeing here with Brunson. So as he comes here across the lane, the outside of his knee is where that perineal nerve is sitting. The Cavaliers player comes through, hits him on the outside of the knee, glancing through that perineal nerve, potentially causing some trauma to that proximal tibiofibular joint like we saw happen with Steph Curry. So that would be another thing on the differential. But I don't, again, see any concerning shift, rupture, pop, things like that. And then if again, we watch Brunson trying to walk off the court here, you'll see how he has that foot drop. He almost rolls his ankle right there because he doesn't have that ability to maintain that support because of what I think is a temporary irritation of that perineal nerve. He can't pick his ankle up, stumbles right there coming off the court. So now that I'm about to finish recording, we got the official update. He is questionable to return with a sore left knee. So this would again, confirm my suspicion that there was contact to the outside of the knee irritated that perineal nerve. That's why we saw him limping so awkwardly coming off the court, but presumably they've tested the structure of his knee. Everything looks okay from their basic physical exam. And so I fully expect based on this update that things should be okay here for Brunson. 
Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.